Hello, my name is Craig Slattery and I'm a lecturer in the UCD School of Biomolecular and Biomedical Science. I'm delighted to give you this taster lecture on my own particular area of interest, which is toxicology. Uh, but first, I'd just like to give you a little introduction to the School of Biomolecular and Biomedical Science and the type of uh, research and teaching that we're involved in in UCD. So the first question you might have is, what is biomolecular and biomedical science? And really, it's about studying biological or living systems. And we look at them at molecular level, cellular level, and then at whole organism levels. And in the School of Biomolecular and Biomedical Sciences, we do this through different subjects or different lenses and different ways of, of looking at living systems. So we have five different disciplines within the school. Uh, biochemistry is concentrating on the machinery inside a cell, the proteins, uh, enzymes, how they work and how they control how the cell behaves. Genetics is concentrating on the DNA and the genetic makeup of cells, uh, how and again how that can influence how a cell be, behaves, um, and how when DNA gets damaged, how that can manifest as a disease or some sort of disorder. Microbiology is looking at microbes, so microscopic organisms like viruses, bacteria, fungi, uh, looking at how they exist in our environment, how we interact with them, um, and ways to limit the damage that some microorganisms can cause to human beings. Neuroscience focuses on the brain and the central nervous system and the important functions within the, the central nervous system, like memory formation, um, cell cell communication, um, how they work normally, and then what happens during different types of diseases that affect humans. Diseases like Alzheimer's disease, uh, neurodegenerative disorders, um, different types of diseases which are very problematic uh, for humans and uh, where treatments are quite limited. And then pharmacology is all about the study of how drugs and molecules interact with the human body. Um, it's different to pharmacy. Uh, pharmacology is about designing new drugs and new ways of um, treating diseases and trying to prevent diseases. And ultimately, all of these different subject areas in the, the school work together with the aim of increasing our understanding of health and disease, and then using that knowledge to try and create new medicines or new treatments for diseases. So my own particular area of interest is toxicology or the science of poisons. And it is a, a sub-discipline within pharmacology. So the aim of this short taster lecture is to give you an idea of some of the aspects of toxicology that you might study across different modules within the UCD science programs. Um, so there are three modules listed at the bottom. That's not all of them, but they are ones where there would be quite a, a good focus and a good degree of toxicology involved in teaching on those modules. So usually when I mention toxicology to people, these are the sort of things that spring to mind. Uh, CSI and different television programs. And really this is forensic toxicology or it's using toxicology um, as a means to solve crimes. And of course, that is a very real application for toxicology. Um, and it's probably the most visible one, but it's not what most toxicologists do. And it's not where most of the science of toxicology is important uh, for the vast majority of people. Really what toxicology is all about is protecting people, protecting the general public. You, me, everybody on the streets, our family, adults, children, older people, very, very young people. We have to try and protect the vast majority of people um, from quite a range of different things that they could possibly be exposed to 
in the environment, either through the air that they breathe, the food that they eat, medicines they might take. Um, so toxicology is really about protecting the public um, from any anything that's potentially dangerous or potentially hazardous to them. So toxicology hits the news quite frequently um, because usually when something goes wrong with poisoning and uh, with people being affected by chemicals or, or different agents, um, it makes news. And, and it seems like a long time ago at this stage. Uh, but if you cast your mind back to just before Christmas, there were uh, a series of cases in the United States and a smaller number in other countries of vaping related uh, injuries and deaths. Uh, almost 3,000 people uh, were confirmed to have this in lung injury uh, in the United States and 68 people unfortunately died. And what happened here really was a contamination. So some sort of a chemical contamination of the vaping liquid happened. And then when people used that product, they inhaled it, it went into their lungs and that contaminant, that chemical that shouldn't have been in there, damaged their lungs and unfortunately caused a number of them to die. Most people in Ireland are very familiar with um, this guy. He's the, the canary, the face of the carbon monoxide poisoning um, campaign. Every year this campaign runs and it's really, really important that it does because even if we look uh, back to Christmas Day last year, just before um, the turn of the year, uh, 21 people were hospitalized in France because there was carbon monoxide poisoning during a Christmas Eve mass. Uh, so this, again, unfortunately, every year in Ireland, you'll see this. And this is uh, toxicology in action, you know, trying to prevent people being exposed to, to a dangerous chemical. But then sometimes toxicology is not so obvious. Um, and sometimes it's quite subtle. And this is really where the, the scientists have to, to do the hard work. And some of you might be aware that there is a, a bit of controversy and uh, a lot of legal cases in the United States going on over a weed killer called Roundup, which we use in Ireland, um, and it's used all around the world and has been for a long time. But there are now question marks over whether Roundup could potentially cause cancer. Uh, so that's something that um, toxicologists are very interested in, and we have to figure out, is it true? And then what do we need to do about it? So as I mentioned, toxicology is the science of poisons. Um, and uh, one definition that I quite like, it's the study of how natural or man-made poisons cause damage to living organisms, um, and also how safe limits of exposure to different chemical agents can be determined. So one big misconception around toxicology is the notion of non-toxic and toxic. Um, and sometimes in the media, this is oversimplified. And there's a, uh, an attempt to try and label things as being either toxic or non-toxic. Uh, so one lesson to take away from this mini lecture is that that's uh, fake news. It's entirely incorrect. Um, it's impossible to characterize things as being toxic or non-toxic because that's a, an artificial construct. In reality and in science, we always have big characters and important individuals who who make discoveries or make observations um, and in toxicology it's a guy called Paracelsus who was around in the 1500s and his big contribution to toxicology and he's called the father of toxicology was the observation that all things are poison nothing is without poison and it's only the amount or the dose that makes a thing not a poison so it seems now like a very simplistic kind of an observation but it was pretty profound at the time and it's basically saying that a little bit of some things is okay, won't harm you. Um, and if you exceed a safe dose, bad things will happen. And that's going to be different for everything on the planet. But everything has that capacity. And he came up with this concept. So everything on the planet, every chemical, every biological agent, at some level is going to be harmless to a human being, but at some level it's going to be dangerous. And for some certain chemicals and biological agents, there's a Goldilocks zone in the middle 
where they're maybe beneficial. And those are the things that we've usually developed on to be medicines. They do something good in the body at the right dose. But obviously if you use too much of those, it can be dangerous. So usually if I was standing in front of you, I would ask you to start naming things that maybe you thought might break this rule, things that are quite harmless. What's the least toxic substance you can think of? And usually within 10 seconds, somebody shouts water. So let's look at water for a moment. So water does conform to this rule, just like everything else on the planet. And when I talk about water damaging the human body or poisoning the human body, we're not talking about drowning. Drowning is a mechanical um, effect. It's cutting off oxygen, getting into the bloodstream um, because it's blocking up the lungs and the, water, the oxygen can't diffuse across. But what we're talking about here is, is water poisoning um, or dilutional hyponatremia. And what happens here is if somebody drinks water too quickly and drinks too much of it quickly, what will happen is the blood will get diluted and all of the important ions like sodium and chloride and potassium, the salt, the sugar, they'll all get diluted to the point where there isn't enough in the system anymore. And then excitable cells, which are the very important cells in our brain or in our heart, which rely on electrical signals to work and to make our heart beat and to make our lungs breathe, they start to shut down. So in toxicology, we talk about something called the LD50, uh, which is a lethal dose in 50% of a, a population. So for water, and it might surprise you to, to know, it's not an awful lot, about six to eight liters for an adult. So what that means is if somebody was to start drinking right now, and they drank six to eight liters of water within an hour, an hour to two hours, something like that, they would get very seriously sick. And if they nothing was done, if they weren't uh, treated, uh, they could potentially die. And this is something that has happened numerous times, unfortunately. So that's just one example from 2007, where a, a woman took part in a water drinking contest um, to win a computer and unfortunately she won the competition but she had drunk so much water so quickly that it overloaded the system and she died and of course things like isotonic sports drinks that industry came out of this toxicology understanding and knowledge because uh, marathon runners used to go out they would run a marathon and uh, then they would start drinking water to uh, try and stave off dehydration, but they weren't replacing the, the lost uh, ions, the sugar, the salt uh, at the same time, and they were diluting the blood and quite often they would collapse and um, lose consciousness. Uh, so it was quite a common thing in long distance runners and that gave birth to the whole uh, area or the whole uh, industry of isotonic sports drinks. So on the other end of the spectrum then, we've talked about something seemingly harmless like water and how it's a poison but let's look at the other end of the spectrum the things that are the most poisonous so the most poison poisonous chemical that humans have created is something called VX nerve agent and as the name suggests nerve agent it interferes with nerve cells and how they communicate with each other and the amount again to uh, kill an average human being is very small in this case. So it's 20 milligrams or 0 0.02 of a gram, which is a very, very small amount. But this is the most dangerous agent that humans have made. And of course, nature has been creating molecules for much longer than we have. So the most poisonous chemical or agent on the planet, the biological agent, is something called botulinum toxin. And the LD50 for that is 50 nanograms for an average human being. So that's 0 0.00000005 of a gram. And that's hard to imagine or picture. But if you take a grain of sand size um, piece of botulinum toxin, that's enough to kill 7,000 people. So that just gives you an idea of how poisonous botulinum toxin is.
and you might say, well, something like that, far too dangerous for contact with humans, obviously. But the power of toxicology is that botulinum toxin has been turned into a medicine and it can be injected for cosmetic purposes uh, because it will stop the cells that make uh, the, the muscles in the, the face contract and make laughter lines and make wrinkles. You can inject it and it will paralyze those, those nerves. Um, and the world supply of botulinum toxin is, is produced or uh, the medicine Botox is produced over in Westport. So Ireland have uh, a, a, a big part to play in the safe use of Botox. And it's not just as a cosmetic either, um, because Botox is very important for the treatment of some disorders uh, where you have muscle spasms or severe migraine or neuropathic pain. So some people after a car accident, they might have very bad pain, which conventional painkillers just don't, don't uh, deal with. So that really illustrates the power of toxicology as a science. Uh, we can take the most poisonous agent known to man, the most poisonous thing on the planet, and we can turn it into a medicine which can be used safely. And it's really, really important because all of these products, medicines, foods, food additives, uh, cosmetics, personal care products, household chemicals, all of these have chemicals in them that are potentially dangerous and it's only through the use of toxicology uh, and understanding uh, how these things could be damaging to the body that we can control that and we can make sure that any of these products are going to be safe. So hopefully that gives you a flavour of uh, some of the topics uh, you might uh, expect to, to hear about in lectures about toxicology in UCD. Um, I work in the Centre for Toxicology and we do lots of different uh, research projects looking at better ways of, of testing chemicals to make sure that they're, they're safe for, for human exposure. And of course, on a, a broader level, I hope it's given you a, a bit of a taster for biomolecular and biomedical science, the sort of things we're interested in, the sort of problems that we, we tried to solve. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this taster lecture.